I, I think as far as I'm concerned, things have gone very well. Um, I'm, you know, 82, my wife's 83. We've been fairly isolated except for being able to go to the supermarket and things like that. But um, both of us led busy lives and we've kept busy. So I think, you know, by um, having those interests and keeping busy, uh, I haven't really had time to think about being isolated and poor loneliness, lonesome me or anything like that. My wife, it's been part of her life to go to the supermarket and she goes and she makes friends with the, the different ones, the um, lady on the delicatessen and the uh, people in the, the fruit area and the, the girls at the checkout. And that's sort of a bit of social contact for her. Uh, my wife came home yesterday, she went, she said, do you know, the manager came and offered to carry my bags out to the car. <laughs> so I have um, what they call chronic leukemia. Now, uh, you know, it's only discovered a few years ago and I'm assured it won't affect my longevity, but I have a checkup every 12 months. And this year, uh, they rang me up and said, would it be all right if the, the doctor um, contacted me by telephone? And we had an excellent consultation. I couldn't have expected better, really. She was well planned and well structured, and I had opportunities to speak, and I asked her questions, and she answered them fully. So I was very happy about that. You know, having this Zoom, um, I've used it a couple of times. Uh, my wife, her family are in Townsville, and uh, her sister, um, in the contact she has, they're using Zoom. So we use the opportunity, well, and the brother of the Rotary Club are using Zoom, Zoom up there. So we use the opportunity to link up a couple of times. Think, you know, that um, the, uh, this has been a great occasion for uh, consumers to get noticed and to show their value. Um, certainly for my dad, um, he's done very well. He's um, took a lot of work to persuade him to not go out and he did accept help with his shopping and things like that. He's had one COVID test, his GP sent him off at one stage. I think they were all confident that he didn't have it, but he had symptoms, so he went off and had it. Um, the thing that appalled me was that the, the doctor said to him, oh, you've got to go to this, it was an old hospital area where he was. And he said, but don't tell the taxi driver that's where you're going because they won't take you. So dad caught the bus down to the train station, got the taxi and just gave them the street address, which they then couldn't find. So they actually left this 93 year old gentleman at the local shopping centre. And dad walked the rest of the way. But he was very pleased because he said he got there on time, so he was happy. <laughs> we, um, we've had two family funerals, one of which we could attend by, you know, live conferencing. Um, and I organised a Zoom for afterwards with some of the family because it was down in Victoria. That meant a lot to all everyone, I think. I'm glad we did it. Getting Dad to cope with Zoom has been a challenge, but he's getting there. So we continue to do that once a week or once a fortnight, just a bit of a family catch up. It, it gives me a chance to actually look at him and see how he looks as opposed to just talking to him on the phone. Um, and I noticed things like he had a bruise on his face and he couldn't even tell me how he got it. We think he's bumped himself at some stage, but you know, it was interesting because you could follow the, progression of the bruise getting worse and then starting to heal but he had an ipad mini and he was struggling with that and in the end my sister went over and set him up on an older ipad and that's all it does 
it has an email link. We send him the email just to that iPad. It's a new email address. And he, he's, he figured out how to do it, but we tend to phone him beforehand and talk him through the, have you turned on the internet? Have you turned on this? Did you get the email? So, <laughs> and it's working. <laughs> we spent the first um, the first meeting saying to him, "We can see the ceiling, Dad. You need to hold the iPad up." But he um, he's now figured out that if he has a cushion behind it, he doesn't have to hold it. So, <laughs> that's worked well. He he's missed church. You know, until they actually closed down the churches, he went to church. So when they were saying, "Oh, you can have a hundred people." Um, he went. He's he's gotten very good at finding an online church service that's live. It, it turns out that he doesn't like the recorded ones. He prefers it live. <laughs> so he he actually gets it from a, a parish that's two or three parish suburbs over, rather than his local one, because that time suits him better. But he's happy, so I'm happy. Mm. But he's missing. His men's group has started doing Zoom meetings, so he was very smug about being able to do Zoom. <laughs> so, <laughs> offering advice, apparently. Um, and, yeah, but he's hoping that now that, that things are getting relaxed that they'll go back to having, they have a, a, a meal once a month, an evening meal at one of the local clubs. So I think he's keen to get back to that. It has been an amazingly fantastic time. Amazingly, like it's like a once in a lifetime, almost like in terms of the pressure of the world, like a winding back to the pace of when we were young. The technology has been amazing. Um, so using things like Zoom, um, Telehealth, everybody says the same thing. Oldies all say the same thing. We do not want to go back. We enjoy our own company. We've got heaps to do, heaps of heaps of interests, and we love it. Yeah, so there you are. Um, staying connected has been interesting because we had lots of connections, lots of group involvement. A lot of it has fallen away. and. It's sort of like we've let it go. So it, it, we've, we've kept it for a local, a local group that I lead that met once a month. We Zoom meetings every Saturday night as a happy hour. Uh, we've really been looking after each other a lot. Um, so lots of Zoom contact. I've had much, much better contact with my own son, we, with our children. Um, some of the best we've ever had, in fact, with the grandchildren. Um, yes, yeah, so I haven't done it personally, but I've had very close involvement with John because he has been um, gearing up, like he's doing all the preliminary treatment stuff, gearing up for prostate operations and radiotherapy and stuff. And it's been really, really, really good and has just saved so much time and effort to be able to access that stuff. And we look forward to accessing pharmaceuticals rather than going into the pharmacy where people are all coughing and colding and bugging. Um, so many of the things you do actually need communication. Um, it might even just be ringing up to get results or something like that or um, all those things take so much time and effort and done by telehealth it just makes life so much simpler like one of the biggest problems for old people speaking personally is transport uh, uh, we have a car but so many of the places like royal brisbane and that are in by public transport easily from where we live well, I mean, theoretically, you could drive in and park, but the co the overhead costs are so expensive that it's just so hard. It's, it, that's something we think is really, really hard. So the telehealth has solved that. It's like all those problems have gone. 
and um, it just is easy. Um, yeah. Um, so, you know, in a way I'm, um, I'm sort of missing contact, but, um, you know, I live in a, well, I call it a village, you know, in our community. There's a lot of um, interaction between people in our community, quite a few people my age. So we have found um, other ways, you know, because my husband's 92, he has Alzheimer's. And look, up until about the last four weeks, you know, sometimes he's tuned in, sometimes he's not, but he's a very clever man and he would come out with amazing comments, you know, really just amazing. Uh, and then the next minute he, he wouldn't even be able to play snap with me, whatever. But um, uh, he, the teleconferencing uh, with him wasn't successful and other friends of mine who've tried it, um, if there's uh, one, I think um, uh, naturally there's not as much stimulation happening Oh, it's my dog. Um, happening in care facilities, so they can't, they couldn't do their normal communal games and you know bouncing balls, and bingo, and all that sort of stuff. So because they weren't getting that constant stimulation, then the brains weren't ticking over. Um, and really, I think the whole concept of you know look at a screen and just I'm talking to you for people in that situation it was it was difficult they offered even you know on the phone um they gave us numbers to ring or they they could contact us so that they were we couldn't ask them to be any more supportive but the the technology just wasn't right for older older people people who are easily disoriented the thought was there but Mm. Mm. One of my husband's daughters from his previous marriage, she totally lost the the plot and was very upset because he seemed disoriented and wasn't responding on the Zoom conference. And so I would imagine the people who are in denial about their parents or their spouses or whatever, uh, having Alzheimer's or whatever, this is the time when it's really hitting home with them. So you have no choice but to accept it and walk with it. He turned 92 during lockdown, so he had a birthday hat on and they really made a big thing of it and sang happy birthday to him and they videoed him uh, so I could, some of them didn't sing in tune, but that was all right. I thought it was a bit Monty Python-ish. But I could send that to Gordon's children and to our children, you know. Um, so that was a lovely thing to see everyone in the dining room singing happy birthday to him and yes